What is up, y'all? This is Andy with Poster Grind, your neighborhood art director that designs movie posters for a living. Today, I wanted to share with you a very easy technique to create a halftone effect on your photography. But this halftone is actually going to be more of a grungy style halftone, which we'll be using a different filter for. Then towards the end of the tutorial, I'm going to show you how to add even more texture by applying some awesome paper texture as well. <laughs> what? All right, first things first, you're gonna to wanna to get some photography. Today, I'm gonna to be working with this awesome image of this biker girl. And then I also have two pieces of paper texture. And the cool thing is I was able to pick up all three of these at an amazing stock photography website known as Envato.com. These guys have amazing stuff to choose from. They have photography, obviously. They have fonts. They have Photoshop plugins. They have video. They have sound. All sorts of fun things you can get creative with. And what's also fun is that they don't charge a whole lot. Their annual plan is around 200 bucks and their monthly plan is around, I don't know, 16 or 17 bucks a month and that's unlimited downloads so you really can't go wrong if you're working professionally if you guys use them please use our link below that helps keep this channel moving forward and we get a little something something for sending them business thanks so much as soon as you found some imagery to work with you're gonna want to crop it I'm gonna crop this one to make it a little bit more interesting and focus in on her face so I'm hitting command T and I'm just going to scale up and then crop this. The next move is we're gonna use an adjustment layer. So go on down to your curves and then we're gonna actually use an S curve and that's what's gonna really bring out some contrast. Next, we're gonna create a new layer. So we're just gonna go down to the plus sign and click that and now we have a new layer. This layer we're gonna turn into a fill of 50% gray. And the easy way to do that is by hitting shift delete and then that brings up our fill panel. And you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you have it on 50% gray. Hit okay. Now this layer, we really need to turn into an editable layer so that you can go back and forth easily. And to do that, just right click and then go to convert to smart object. Oh yeah, hey guys, can you do a quick favor and just hit that like button right now? I really appreciate it. Thanks so much. Now we can create the halftone by going up to the filter and then we're gonna to go to filter gallery. And then on filter gallery, mine's already selected at halftone pattern, but you will find that in the sketch folder. So make sure that you go to halftone pattern. And then on halftone pattern, you can mess around with the size and the contrast. And now you don't have to be exactly perfect on your, what you're doing now because you have no idea what's gonna happen. But because we're working with a smart object, we can go back and forth easily. Now we need to add one more filter to this. So by going down to the plus sign, click the plus sign, and now we have a new layer. We wanna turn this one into torn edges and that's gonna be under the same folder. And then like that, if you look closely, you can see that all these edges are a lot more grungy and that's the grungy effect of our halftone effect. Then hit OK, and now we have this halftone layer ready to rock. Now you can go ahead and play around with the blending modes, but generally you're going to want to use hard mix. And like that, you can see that we have this really cool halftone effect. So this is what I'm talking about. We have all this halftone happening, but we need to do one more thing, and that's by inverting our halftone layer here. Just go ahead and hit Command I and that will automatically invert our layer. And now you can see that our halftone is inverted and a lot more realistic. As you can see, the halftone is a little bit on the strong side. So in order to fix that, is you can either play with the opacity or, which I like even better, is you can mess around with the fill. By reducing the fill, you reduce the effect. From here, we can go ahead and mess around with the coloring. So some people like to have black and white, so you can use an adjustment layer just by going to black and white. And now we have that. Or you can use some gradient maps by going to the adjustment layer, gradient map, and then you can just kind of pick out whatever colors you kind of want to play around with. So at this point, it's very subjective and dependent on what kind of project you're working on. 
or you can drop the amount of black and white and make something a little bit on the desaturated side. That always looks pretty cool. If you want to readjust certain things in the halftone layer, you can go ahead and do that by cl double clicking filter gallery, hitting OK, and then going back in and messing around with these adjustments. So let's say you want to drop the contrast, you can go ahead and do so, hit OK, go back, and now you have less contrast on those halftones, like so. Now, to add a little bit more fun to our project, let's throw in those paper textures. So go ahead and get yourself some paper texture. All you really have to do is mess around with the blend modes until you see something that you like. For this piece of crinkled paper, I'm just gonna put it on multiply. And then on that top one, we'll go to multiply as well. And then just drop the opacity on both of them a little bit. And now over here, we have a lot of, a lot of black. And so what I'm gonna do is paint in some light by using a curves layer. So I'm gonna to go to curves right over her, over the photography layer. I'm gonna increase the light by quite a bit, and that looks horrible, but when you're on the mask, go ahead and hit Command-I, invert that, push B on your keyboard, and then we're just going to make sure that we're painting with white, and then we're just going to paint in this hair to bring that back. And you can even use this to add highlights, to your photography and you can also get rid of see how this is all blown out over here we can get rid of that as well by going to curves another curves adjustment and then we're just going to drop that down bring out some darkness make sure you're on the mask hit command i and then we're just going to paint in where we want to bring back or get rid of some of the uh, painting with white some or get rid of some of these highlights that are a little too strong like that. And then our bonus material is we're just gonna add some cool text to it. This is a fun technique you can do. So hit T on your keyboard. And I'm just gonna type out grunge. And then I'm going to hit Command T, get that bigger. And we're just gonna put that down here. And now on this layer, on our text layer, we're gonna change the blending mode to exclusion. And then on top of exclusion, we're gonna add one more adjustment layer. And then that gradient map, we're going to attach it to the text layer by using a clipping mask. All you got to do is hit Option, Command, G, and that'll connect it to there. And now on that gradient, let's go ahead and switch the gradient to some different colors that might look cool. There we go. I like that. So there you have it, guys. That's our grungy halftone effect with a bonus text tutorial. I hope you guys dig it or dug it. And if you did, please hit that like button and look out for the next video in the future. Thanks so much.